So I'm going to give you a, a pair of talks that are kind of about a game. So I first started paying attention to this biodiversity informatics world, or the, the we could call it the biopolicy world, um, about 20 years ago. And it's very interesting that you you see initiatives come, and you see initiatives go, and you get to a point where you see repeated long-term patterns. And so I just want to touch on that a bit with you all. And I call it the Biodiversity Informatics Initiative Game. Okay? And I just want to illustrate this partly so that you in your initiatives don't fall into this temptation and partly so that as you as a biodiversity informatics practitioner can look at the other people who are playing this game or the other groups that are playing this game with a critical eye so you know it ends up being kind of this, this big game, you know? Lots of color, a really interesting title, and there's nothing to it. There's no substance. Uh, one of my students installed Angry Birds the game on my wife's telephone one time. And I wasn't around, and when I came back and saw this game on this telephone, I was like, what a stupid idea. <laughs> but how many millions of people have downloaded that game and play it? It's hundreds of millions of people. It's a non-trivial percentage of all people on Earth. So there's got to be something to this idea of a game where, I mean, look at that font. Isn't that cool? And space, and there's red, and there's green, and there's blue, and there's yellow. There's something to all of this where it's a game. You know, let's look at some other games. There's some that, that here in South Africa they get into, and, and the rest of the world can't figure out why. Uh, there are others that are genuinely global sports. Um, that's Cameroon in honor of, of our friend Moses who couldn't make it because of South African visa policies. But these are other games that they have something about them. It doesn't matter who wins the World Cup. But every four years, Kristalka knows that I move out of my office with my computer, I move out of my office to a bar. And I sit there for four weeks and watch the whole World Cup. In Brazil, where we had the good fortune of, of spending a World Cup the last time Brazil won, they don't even open banks on the days that the team is playing. Right? I mean, there's something about this. So why aren't we doing this, or why are we doing this, with biodiversity? I made this up, by the way. The International <laughs> Commission for New Biodiversity Informatics Initiatives. I made it up. But look at that. Species. There's a scorpion. There's a bird. There's a little bit of everything. You know, a big mammal. I used a really neat font, and I invented an acronym. That's a big temptation. I, I, I invented this. I'm going to do this a couple of times. So what does it come down to? It's marketing, okay? In the marketing world, you put a pretty woman, you say new and improved, even better than it used to be, <laughs> right? I mean, look at these two. You put something pretty. In the biodiversity world, usually it's not a woman. It, usually it's an animal, but something with antlers or horns or big fangs. And you say, my initiative is new and improved. Right? And go to the grocery store and look. 
every single product is new and improved. And go on the web and type in biodiversity informatics and every single product is new and improved. So let's take an example, and it's kind of my favorite example these days. We get the Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, affectionately known as IPES, right? <coughs> now, probably each one of you has heard from your respective national governments and, and various institutions that IPES is coming to town, and this is the new one. But let's look at it. So I just went through the IPBES page and essentially their summary of their history. Biodiversity from terrestrial, marine, coastal, and inland water ecosystems provides the basis for ecosystems and the services they provide that underpin human well-being. Okay. Check them, please. Biodiversity and ecosystem services are declining at an unprecedented rate. A new and improved platform has been established by the international community, the leading intergovernmental body for assessing, get this, and we're gonna come back to this in a really scary way, assessing the state of the planet's biodiversity its ecosystems and the services they provide to society. Remember that. Be patient with me for about five slides, and I'm going to show you something that's horrifying. Okay, really, really bad. But though that's, that's the reason for being for IPBES. That's the rationale, right? The biodiversity world is going to hell really quickly and we need to do something about it. Haven't we heard this before? I know where he's going. Well, here's the world's first envir global environmental organization, neutral forum, practical solutions to conservation and development, conserving biodiversity central to the mission. That's World Conservation Union. It's what is now called 60 years later, the IUCN. Towards a biodiversity knowledge network for scientific and technical cooperation. There you go, Chris. There's the clearinghouse. Leading, new and improved, conservation organization working around the world to protect ecologically important, blah, 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 oh, sorry, uh, Nature Conservancy 60 years ago. So we hear the same verbiage over and over again. Here's a newer one. Global access to knowledge about life on Earth. Global community serving the general blah, 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 and professional scientists around the world. But it's the same thing of we're going to do it for you. We're going to give you everything you need. So I personally have become rather cynical because I hear about the next new and improved initiative and my first reaction is bullshit. What are you going to do that's really, really new? So the first thing that an initiative, either one that you guys create or one that somebody else creates and tries to sell to you, it should do something that is qualitatively new. As Tanya said yesterday, there's no reason to compete. The bone doesn't have enough meat on it for two dogs to fight over it. So we need something that's really new. It could be new data, new data access, new insights or analyses, new technology, new community. It needs to give appropriate and proper credit to antecedents. You know, there's this phrase about science is, is standing on the shoulders of giants, and it really is true. Nothing that we could do couldn't have happened without Linnaeus 
and a few centuries of systematic biologists and a few decades of informaticians, if those antecedents didn't exist, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. I say this not to imply that there is lack of transparency, but I think it's very important to be completely clear about what's being done, why, who's paying for it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I want to see when I hear about something new. Now in your cases, it may be a first biodiversity information network for this country. Or it may be thematic. It might be um, medically important arthropods, biodiversity information network. That's okay. But I just do, I do want to see that you're not dressing up the same old thing and reselling it. Okay, there's a saying in Mexico that if you dress a monkey up in silk, he's still a monkey, right? Nothing against monkeys. Um, so I really want to see substance and not what we call smoke and mirrors. What do too many initiatives do? They repackage the same old thing. This is the really bad part. They pull funding away from existing initiatives. Now sometimes the, initi the existing initiative is smoke and mirrors. And so all the new and improved initiative does is kill the old one which was gonna die anyway. Okay, but sometimes that new and improved thing comes along, somebody does a great job of marketing, and real resources are taken away from initiatives that were doing real good. So we have to be very careful that by creating these new initiatives or by signing on to these new initiatives, we don't dilute the overall set of resources that are available to the overall mission. A particular hatred of mine, I really, really hate this, is the idea of meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings. And, well, my participation in this field began in 1997 with a North American Biodiversity Information Network. And I've gone to probably between dozens and hundreds of meetings since then. I hate meetings. But I say no about three quarters of the time. And the funny thing is, so let's imagine I'm going to one quarter of the meetings that I could have gone to. There are people that I see at every meeting I ever go to. And so that either means that by coincidence, those people are in attending the same 25% of the meetings that I'm attending, or it means that they go to every single meeting. Okay? We live in an age where we can call somebody up on the phone or on something that works like a phone for free. And that person can be in Dyke Hall at the University of Kansas and talk with us here at Sandby in Cape Town. It's a small world. You know, in an hour and a half, we're gonna call Jorge, I hope, and have a nice conversation with him. Why are we spending tons and tons and tons and tons of money on meetings? So when I hear about that you know, six meeting planning process to set up the new and improved initiative, right away my, my, flat, my uh, warning bells go off. I'm also worried when we need a coordinating secretariat. I think we can coordinate in a distributed fashion. I don't think we need 
big, salary-heavy, staff-heavy secretariats. And of course, I truly, truly hate the smoke and mirrors. This is just a parenthetical. Remember I promised you on it best to come back to it. Remember I was talking about, let's, let's actually go back there just for fun. There we go, look at this. Assessing the state of the planet's biodiversity. Okay, remember that. Assessing the state of the planet's biodiversity. Now watch. Many biodiversity assessments emphasize species inventories. That is, identification of all species in a region. The essential biodiversity variables framework instead emphasizes repeated measures for the same tax at the same locations or regions. They literally explicitly reject the need to assemble a complete catalog of the species present at a place or in a region at a point in time. What they're talking about is picking some monitorable, monitorable taxa. You know it's gonna be birds, right? Maybe throw in some amphibia, maybe throw in some vegetation. But they're literally, in this paper, which is titled Essential Biodiversity Variables, in a paper titled Essential Biodiversity Variables, they reject the need to characterize the entire community. Give me a break. How can you call that Essential Biodiversity Variables? That is offensive for an initiative that just said that it's going to assess the state of the planet's biodiversity and they're not going to do the inventory of the planet's biodiversity. Unbelievable. It's new and improved and what it is is a big sign with a pretty woman in a scanty little outfit and that sign is hung over smoke and mirrors. Give me a break, okay? It's the perfect example of what biodiversity initiatives should avoid. My opinion, I know some of you are probably having to deal with it best stuff, but focus on the content. Focus on what's not smoke and mirrors and you get down to the bullshit factor. You see, Chris, we can put that on YouTube. So I looked on GBIF for the word initiative. And you get all of these initiatives. There's the National Fatherhood Initiative. There's the International Youth Initiative. There's the Homeless Initiative. How do we sort through these and know which ones of these make a real difference to their cause, right? Versus how much of, how, which of them are smoke and mirrors. So the challenge for this course, for you guys, and for anybody else who sits down and uh, watches 30 hours of, of YouTube videos, the challenge is to break out of this mold, to avoid the bullshit factor. Data, real data. It's a focus on primary, research grade information, full download. So when I say primary, it's a unitary data point. It'll be things like data that place a particular taxon in a particular place at a particular point in time. It won't be 
a polygon that some group of experts drew on a map. And it won't be a status assessment. It'll be the data that went into the polygon or the data that went into the status assessment. Okay? So one of my biggest criteria, Les, you were asking me earlier about what I thought about a particular initiative. I want to see primary research grade data and I want full download. The initiative you asked me about, no download. That's scary. It's a bad sign. Remember the difference between data and information. Right? The information is some level of synthesis by a repeatable, documentable protocol. Well, when you provide information, this may be that report to the minister, it might be uh, a map on a web page, what have you. Provide that synthesis and inter interpretation, but do it with full transparency of sources and processes. Anybody should be able to go to your web page, see your information product, and say, wow, I want to do that for my region or for my taxon. Okay, limited goals, we've talked about this already. Offer to do only what you can do excellently. And last of all, uh, an open community. Okay, we should avoid closed clubs. We should look for the ideal set of partners who can move an initiative forward. I'm kind of beating a dead horse, but the dead horse keeps coming back. These are the IPBES objectives in their most recent statement of their objectives. And all I want you to do, I, I, was, I haven't mentioned this to you guys, but I've been jotting down bits of wisdom that I've heard from the different talks. And one of them from Jorge, I think from Selwyn and from Tanya was, figure out how to speak the language of your audience. Now, enhance the enabling environment for the knowledge policy interface. Strengthen the knowledge policy interface. Strengthen the knowledge policy interface with regards to thematic and methodological issues. Strengthen the knowledge policy interface on the global dimensions of changes in biodiversity. Communicate and evaluate. What the hell does that say? Yeah, it's, 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 it's initiative speak. It's what happens when you let too many people with PhDs write a list of objectives by committee. There's no substance up there other than communicate and evaluate what we do. So it's very, very important to be very clear and very transparent about what it is you do. So back to this, this is my set of opinions. Maybe I've learned a bunch of things and I'd make a longer list now. But these are just some things to think about. To me, the most critical things are real contributions. Don't give people pre-chewed information. Give them data. Don't insult people's intelligence. Give them real data. And I also focus very, very clearly on this, of limited goals. Don't promise this when all you're going to be able to do is this. Promise this and give it. So, it's game time. Right? This is, this is the game. I don't mean to make fun of the process, but I am giving a 20-year perspective, and Vanderlei and Kristalka could give somewhat longer perspectives than I've had. But it's true, right? Yep. I mean, it's the, it's the game. And the question is for you guys, for me, for Chris, for Vanderlei, for Tanya, for Jorge for less, 
Can we play the game honestly and openly in such a way that we actually make a difference? Or are we just going to play the game because we play the game, right? 